point here, and they show a, a guard by a computer desk by where the lockers are, and we match the picture to the symbol to make sure it is actually you and not some, you know, street rat that just found your card lying on the street and wanted to steal your stuff. So as long as you're not photo shy, I think we should be a okay. Do you guys consent to this security check? I consent. Can I take my own picture? Uh, and and the 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 guard by the computer looks up at McLaughlin and goes like, "Is that is that part of protocol?" McLaughlin kind of scratches the back of his head and he's like, "Uh, as long as the picture turns out fine, I don't see a problem with it." Yay! All right, you take a <laughs> selfie. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a, um, a question as far as how things go. If I wanted sure. to conceal my knives, and I'm obviously like trying to conceal them in different places so that maybe they find one and not the other, would I roll separately for each one? Uh, yeah. Okay. You would. You would have to just because you're concealing them in different areas, right? Right. right. So. I have to allow for a separate one. So, do you try to hide anything? Yes. Does anyone try to hide anything? Okay. Yes. Um, so, no not. weapons. Uh, how about this hand pick? It's usually used for just digging, but I mean, it's pointy. It's a tool. It's fine. Trust me, if you come at someone with a, uh, a hand pick, we'll, we'll put you down faster than you can actually do enough damage with that thing. He says. Okay. Confidently. Um, I, 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 I want to hide both the knives, and I want to, like, when they're patting me down and stuff, I want to keep, like, laughing and, like, moving, like, stop, 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 that, and use that to kind of hopefully... <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a plus 10% to your conceal roll right. to do that, but these guys are professionals, so I can't give you any higher. No, no, I understand. So it's a, so it's a 30% chance for both of them. Uh, it so would roll be, and we'll it, see if they find them. It would be 34%. Because I just leveled up. Oh, sorry. Oh, I forgot Ooh. you leveled up. Okay, sorry. 34%. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll just roll two yeah, yeah. at 100. Yep. Oh, my God. Why Wait, what? You, why what? you add 32%? <laughs> so you got 87 no, and 32. I didn't actually add anything. That's so weird. No, no you, that's fine. One is 87 yeah. and one yeah, is 32. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, uh, they find one knife, but they don't find the other one. Oh, okay. I see how that works. Okay, cool. Woohoo! So the one uh, knife will just say that's by your hip, and right. they say, "I'm sorry, sir. You are going to have to." Even oh though it's my just gosh! A little I knife. completely forgot about that one. I am so sorry. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, no problem. One. Problem. And they do a more rigorous pat down, just in case you are still forgetful. Right. And but don't find anything else. So they find a knife. I don't know by your boot or whatever you wherever you want to say you put it. Uh, but yeah, after that, you guys just put your, make like, you don't have to erase it from your character sheet or anything like that. You just don't have access to it. Now, McLaughlin mm -hmm. says, we are trading paradise here over at Parents Post. So if you want to sell any of your goods, uh, <laughs> um, you are free to do so. Uh, transporting it from here to the, the, the shops will require a guard escort. But well, other than that, you're fine, he says. I have a uh, question. Uh-huh. Is there, is there like, a, a cleaning place? Because I need one of my body armors cleaned. Clean? He goes, yes. uh... The inside is pretty smelly. Well, around the side there, we have parking for repairs. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to look at Mila. Cut it down with a hose, I guess. Yeah, we could do our best to clean it. I'm gonna look at Mila. Awesome. Zombie. Zombies. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, and uh, McLaughlin also says, uh, if you don't mind, um, your late uh kill there, that Borg, uh, Finger has taken a bit of an interest of it. He's asked me to deliver it over to his abode where you guys can talk about a selling price if you choose to sell these uh, dead cybernetics uh, to him directly. Is that alright by you? 
Absolutely. Sure, I've been looking to, to get this off my hands. I was like, good, good. He's like, Perrin, when it comes to the exotic or specialized equipment, Perrin still likes to do a lot of the trading himself. Uh, so, yeah, um, obviously the guards do point you towards number 16 there. That seems to be uh, almost like a hangar bay type area where repairs are done on vehicles and um, body armor and power armor and they can recharge your Eclipse too there as well. And ooh, ooh. number 15 is where you can park your vehicles. That's an area where you that's it's where for travelers to park their vehicles and for individuals who don't want to stay inside the fort camp there as well. So it's a mixed campground and parking cleared area. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm assuming you guys just park your vehicles as per usual, right? Yep. You can you can get your repairs done and everything like that right now, but um, considering that you have quite a few hours to kill, I was thinking maybe for the sake of posterity, unless you guys have a better idea, for um, for you guys to take Kyle and Alicia to the clinic to get checked out now while you're going there, Alicia can tell you some of the main areas of this post. Sure. That works? Sounds good. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So let me just get my cheat sheet out here. <clears throat> hey, let me... Hey, hey, hey. You guys just whispering hey to each other like a bunch of horses? Me Mila? I don't know where Kriana went. <laughs> She's there. She's at <laughs> you. Did she? Kriana. Uh oh. Okay. Nope, she's gone. But she's just she like Mila's just fun. staring off into space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like we just like grab her by the wrist and lead her along. <laughs> no, we can't hear you at all. <laughs> She types to the, you guys can't hear me? I just imagine, like, Mila zoned out. Oh, no. <laughs> I like how I said when I when we first said Kriana and nothing, and I just yelled it like that would make it different. <laughs> Kriana! Like, like, it, like the headphones somehow will carry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you can't get it fixed, you can always type to us until you do get it fixed. That'll work, too. Now Mila's working out a series of blinks <laughs> <laughs> to communicate. Wait, wait, I got this. <laughs> Hi. There we go. We heard you. <laughs> that was so weird. I was like talking, like Vern was going, hey, hey, and I was like, what? Yeah, I know. I was like, I looked at you, and he's like, I need to wash it out. And I was like, zombies. And you didn't say anything. I was like, oh, okay. did say something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, what, what did we miss? What you were supposed to say? What did we miss? Oh, I was just being snarky. It's nothing important. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I can just skip that then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So, uh, Alicia uh, takes you through the city towards the the main clinic. So, you already know what number one is, and number three, number 16, and number 15. Uh, number six, uh, Alicia doesn't know what it is, because it's too new to her. But oddly enough, it's uh, a series of, or really, actually, it's more just one big tent that has been kind of propped up in that area. It's red and white, red and white striped tent, and outside is a makeshift sign that says Cyberworks Incorporated, and she doesn't know what the story behind that is. But uh, number four on the map, that is the Broken Drum General Goods, and she asks with a sarcastic, unimpressed look, on her face, and she's like, can you guess why they call it the broken drum? Because no. it only has hmm. one drumstick? No. She's like, because they say it can't be beat. And she's like, I just want to tell you now because because, because the stupid clerk in there is going to ask you the same thing, and I don't want you to look mm -hmm. like an idiot. Mila's laughing hysterically, by the way. <laughs> like, that's so funny! 
Yeah, that. <laughs> Alicia just looks on with with amusement, like like a child who knows how to smoke. It's kind of cool, but kind of disturbing in the same way. That's the look that she's giving you. She's like, okay. What? <laughs> All right, number five is the Platinum Torch. Sorry, the Platinum Touch. Weapons and armor. She's like, that's where you can go to get yourself equipped for a little bit more rougher business. Number two there is a large... uh, It's practically a mansion. It's a three-story wooden building. Uh, Not opulent, though. It's it's almost built like a, a military headquarters, almost. And she says that's where Perrin lives. And that's pretty much all. Oh, sorry. She says that's where Finger lives. Sorry, that's his nickname. Uh, number seven. I got there. a question. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you call him Finger? She's like, oh. She gives a bit of a smirk and she says they call him Finger because he has his fingers in many pies. He's a very connected guy and that nickname just stuck. Pretty much everyone around calls him Finger. I'm going to look at Mila and go, it's a figure speech, it's not literal. He's not actually putting fingers in pies and just just making you sure you know. Good, because I was worried. I know, I know. That was so many pies ruined. No, I know, I know. (laughs) The pies are fine. I go over to Mila and go, look, if he does, I can burn any berry pies that he does that. And you should turn out, turn out perfect. I love how our, our, our group has just gotten used to her. <laughs> <laughs> really quickly, too. This has been Mila like... Looks, Mila looks at Patrick really touched like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And gives a warm smile back. Aw, <laughs> this is adorable. <laughs> this is adorable. Okay, so continue on with the... Uh, number seven is the stables and leather works. Uh, number eight is Ash and Ash Smithy. Uh, number nine is the local carpenter. Number ten is the second largest building in the town. It's two stories. Uh, it rivals pretty much the general size of Perrin's mansion, but it's called the Goldsmith Inn. Number 11 there is the Horn and Hornet Bar and Dance Hall. She says she's spent many a time there. She's like, it's pretty damn good entertainment. And she points to Mila and she says, you might actually find yourself a good gig singing there. I know they're always looking for talent. Uh, Number 13, she says that's the local cyber doc, but uh, Dr. Marcel Hale she calls him. He travels around. He goes up to Northern Gun, uh, Ipshang, she says. It's, 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 it's a town to the northwest. She's like, he travels between there and here quite often, so sometimes he's not in. Same thing with uh, number 14. Uh, she's like, there's a techno wizard uh, in town as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a techno wizard is someone who um, incorporates magic with technology. Hmm. And he travels typically between parents post New Laszlo and Laszlo. And then he kind of makes that trip there. So he's kind of a traveling merchant as well. Uh, and other, that's pretty much it. Now, those other little clusters of buildings, those are just local abodes. Uh, Alicia also tells you that the majority of people who actually live in Perrin's Post don't actually live in the fortress itself. Uh, A lot of them are farmers or herds people or general trades people. Their abodes are actually outside, but if there is ever an attack, everyone comes inside the fort proper. She also points out that even though it looks like the walls are made of wood, behind them are highly high, thick, reinforced uh, materials, uh, concrete and other sort of steel alloys uh, that actually provide a lot more protection than it will, than it seems. She's like, Perrin has this big thing for the frontier look, so that's why the outside looks all wood, but everything isn't quite what it seems, and it's tougher than, tougher than it looks. She's like, kind of like, kind of like Finger himself. But um, 
Yeah, uh, but the, you managed to head up to the clinic there, which is number 12. And uh, outside, the little um, sign says Dr. Elias and Dr. Murdoch. And next to Dr. Murdoch, it says is in. So assuming that is the physician that's in to see people. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys you know, choose to enter the clinic, even to poke your heads in, you can see that it is a, a very clean facility. Uh, kind of very professional looking. It's a single story uh, ha um, place, but it's 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 relatively large. I'd say uh, it's probably a good 60 feet across by... Actually, you know what? I'll go by square footage. It's like a good 1,000 square feet area. Hmm. Uh, so it, it's quite large. You can incorporate a lot of people. Right now it's very slow. There's only one other person there who broke his arm uh, while he when he fell on his plow. And uh, Dr. Murdoch is there to help out. Um, it's pretty clear, uh, especially thanks to... Are you still there, Al? Should yep, we? I'm still here. Okay. It's pretty clear. Uh, I don't make any sort of assumptions, but... Uh, it's clear that Dr. Murdoch's um, analysis of the situation is that, very similar to your own, gross malnutrition. He does a few scans, uh, body scans, to make sure they're okay. He gives them some pills as a vitamin supplement to help them uh, rebuild their base, especially calcium. He's very concerned that their bones are brittle because of the diet they have been on. He asks what happened, what got them, both Alicia and um, Kyle, to their this day. No. <laughs> uh, no. Dr. Murdoch raises his eyebrows and says, what do you mean you can show me their diet? Well, apparently they've been eating some of this glowy moss a bit. It's, it's a weird situation, but this is basically what they've been eating. And I, I hand him a, a vial of the glowy moss. Takes the vial and says, wait, and he looks to Alicia and Kyle and says, you've just been eating this for how long? And they both kind of just look at each other and shrug. And I'm like, I don't know, months? He's like, oh my goodness. He's like, you're, you're lucky you're not dead. And he hands the vial back to, to you, uh, Patrick. Oh man, do you know what it is? Looks like fungus to me. Oh. <laughs> uh, it does uh, but he does prescribe them uh, some pills that will cost 75 credits mm -hmm. and he suggests bed rest for the next week at least while they get their uh, their basic calories up he says that they have to eat at least 7,000 calories a day, even though they're not active. And then after that week, for them to get regular exercise so their muscles can regain their strength from possible atrophy. But he's like, that's the best we can do. Uh, except for you there, young uh, – not young man, but you there, sir. And he looks to Kyle and he says, by scan, say your liver is in bad shape. I suggest you stay away from alcohol while you recover. I don't know how bad the effect would be if you were to drink in your current state. And Kyle looks a little disturbed by that, but he nods regardless. Can I put a hand on his shoulder and say like, quietly, you don't need it? Mm. Certainly, yeah, definitely, definitely, of course. Um, and, all right, well, but at this point, um, you know, you're, the people that you rescued, they're in relatively good shape. Um, mm -hmm. They're both going to check themselves into the, to the local inn, the Goldsmith Inn. So they say that if you need to talk with them, you can find them there, for sure. All right. Um, to the rest of the party, are you guys okay with? Because obviously we've offered a position for, uh, uh, uh Alyssa, Alicia, Alicia. Alicia. Oh my God, <laughs> I know. I mean, everything. you know, I'm gonna just write <laughs> stuff down. That's Alicia what I did. is now one of my skills, apparently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's not gonna like the sound of that. <laughs> um, oh God. <laughs> 
Do you, are you guys fine with um, hanging out here for a week until she recuperates? Because he's absolutely right. She should not be moving around. After that week, if we keep her out of any serious problems, she should be fine. Um, obviously, I'm sure we all have some shopping and things to do. That Can anyone have an objection to staying here for a week? I um, have no objections. How far out can we go if we stay here for a week? I mean, obviously, Anybody? yeah, obviously, I'm not going to... You can go as far as you want to. Um, but, you know, maybe so that you can get back by the night? Uh, okay, because just... there's that... There's that radio radiation area. I want ah, to check I understand. Out. Um, yeah, that's only two hours away, so that shouldn't be too bad. I'd like to talk to the doctor, and um, sure. say, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a traveling uh, doctor, and I'm wondering wh if I'm going to be staying here for the week anyway. Is there any way I can help out with the clinic? Is there anything you need? Uh, you don't have to pay me. It's just better than being bored. <laughs> Uh, you're offering your services for free, he asks? Pretty much, yes. <laughs> he gives a bit of a chuckle and says, With all due respect, sir, you must not be a very successful traveling doctor. <laughs> Aww. No. With all due respect, I happen to be a very successful traveling doctor, which is why I don't always have to charge. Oh. oh no! And he and he, oh. and, he, and his and his spurt turns into more of a serious look. He goes, "All right, good point." Uh, I, with all, once again, he says, "With all due respect," he tends to say that a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, you are a complete stranger to us. We appreciate your skills, but either myself or uh, Doctor Elias uh, would have to be here in the clear because clinic as well but you you are more than welcome to assist us with any problems and perhaps we can engage in a dialogue of course about what you've seen maybe some strange symptoms or whatever you know knowledge is power i just says. just to make it clear i'm not charging because my goal is not to take business away from you it's just to help if i'm going to be here anyway he says I, i'll never say no to a free pair of hands awesome oh, okay yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Just um, glance over at Mila waiting for her to do anything. <laughs> Mila's kind of looking upwards like she's super bored. She's just staring at the ceiling or the sky, wherever they are. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so now the town has pretty much opened itself up to you guys. Uh, you do have a dinner date at 6 o'clock, but considering that it's not even noon yet, by the time you went through all this process, it's probably around 11 o'clock. So you have like a good 7 hours to kill. Um, obviously there's a lot more detail to these buildings, but Alicia was just giving a general knowledge type tour. So uh, it'd be really nice for you guys to go together as a group of course, yeah. to these destinations. But I realize how unrealistic or how confining that can be to your characters so if you do want to split up until six o'clock that's more than fine but the options open to you Mila's going to be following someone okay um they're willingly or not willingly so <laughs> well, 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 well here's the thing first i think first we should uh probably at least all stick together until we sell everything we're going to sell and then figure out who gets what money wise mm-hmm hmm. Because we don't even know what we can go buy until we know how much money we have. And we did just give away 10,000 credits, so... True. Oh, yeah. I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was even thinking of... when... I'm sorry, yes, go ahead, Tom. We're probably going to get a bunch of credits from the um, cyborgs. Corpse. Yeah, we still got to hear back from... Right, but I mean, we, we can sell the other stuff. Didn't we bring a whole lot of um, other things to sell? Did we? Or did yeah, we... Uh... Things, so. Yeah, yeah. So we can sell that stuff and then uh, and then maybe go shopping today with what we have and then get the cyborg stuff later. Yeah, sounds good. I am, I am, I am willing. I don't know um, how you guys feel about it, but since we are traveling as a group now and anything that we buy pretty much helps the group as a whole, I'm willing to pull my money into basically like a large pot and then just kind of split it amongst you guys. You don't have to. You can keep your money if you want. It's just that 
I, I, I feel like if you buy something that helps the group, it's helping me anyway. So I don't mind, like, I say we sell the stuff, put it all into a pot, I'll add my 2,200 credits, it's not a lot, and then we just divide it amongst evenly, or we can just all go shopping together and then decide how we want to spend the money that way. Yeah. I, I have no objection as just, like, a, a large pot instead of individual money. I have no objections to that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mila. You're so surly. <laughs> <laughs> She's so bored right now, guys. She just wants to Mila? climb Mila? things. Mila? Mila? Mm -hmm. Can you... Can you... I have something... I have something I don't want anyone to find. Why? I give her, like, a signal flare. Can you hide this from me? <laughs> oh, good. It's a signal flare this time. That's good. Good. Not your scalpel. Not my scalpel ever again. <laughs> no, you can tell her about the scalpel, though. Here's the scalpel again. <laughs> <laughs> can you, can this you, one's bigger. Can you hide this, this time, in a super secret place? Yeah. Amila runs off. <laughs> okay. You don't see Mila for a little while. She'll push the group when Mila wants to. She's like a groundhog in that way. <laughs> Okay, um, okay. Then, then how about we figure out what we have to sell, and then that way we know where to go. You have a cyborg, and I believe the man might be waiting for us for that. No, the, no, no, the cyborg's being transferred, right? So it's not in our possession right now. Yeah, correct. Yeah. It's being transferred by the guard to Perrin's abode, because he wants to deal with that deal personally. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we're not going to be doing that until after... Well, you, you, you figured you could stop by his place and find out if you wanted to, but he inferred that you would talk probably talk about right that while he was eating. That makes sense. I, okay. I don't actually. I didn't so, actually. Sure. I was gonna say I don't actually have anything to sell equipment wise. I have twelve incense sticks. <laughs> yep. Woot. That's. It. I have. A ton of pre-war artifacts. Mm. Okay. Well, well, hang on, real quick. I mean, are you okay with that? Obviously, this is stuff that you got before we became a group. If you sell that rightly, the money should be yours. Sure. sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, Patrick I doesn't really care other either way. Okay. Like, <laughs> I just want to make sure because as I long do. As be... people are well equipped, you can use my money. <laughs> All right. Um, so no gambling. Okay. No gambling. That's too bad. No gambling. No. All right, I'm back. I just, just respond, just like <laughs> that's just terrible we're, uh, statistics. You're not going to get any money that way. Mila, we're seeing what we have to sell. Do you have anything? You guys that... didn't sell already. Mila, we're standing oh, in the same oh. spot we were in when you left. Sorry. Um, let me see. I got these things you gave to me, and Mila pulls out the grenades. You still want me to hold these? <laughs> did they not take that away from her? They did take them away from her. <laughs> <laughs> She's not holding yeah, anything. Fine. She's just holding out <laughs> nothing. <laughs> not that. Although She's it would holding, be really funny if they rocks. forgot and they just a guard nearby is like, Grenade! And just tackles Mila. But no, that's not happening because they would have... I forgot about that. That's BB done. Like that. Did um, they away from you? Um, <laughs> like holds up her palms with nothing in it. Yeah. I still have these grenades. No, Mila, no, you don't. Hold that hash faster. Where did they go? Good They're probably in one of your hiding spots, Mila. Go find them. No, no, don't tell him that. No. <laughs> anyway. I'm a stupid Inferno? bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, back on track. Yeah. Uh, Inferno? Yeah, what's up? Would they have taken the empty Eclipse? Mm, no. No, okay. wouldn't have. Eventually, during the day, I want to go to number 16 and recharge those. Same here. Yeah, I mean, might as well recharge the, the clips I've been using in my rifle as well. Yeah. Okay, you guys can stop there now if you want. Is there any way I can fix uh, my armor? Yeah. Yep, that's where you would fix your armor, too. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's head there first, I suppose. Yeah, let, let's let just head there. Okay. Oh, no, wait, no, no. First things first, we should sell whatever 
uh, Patrick wants to sell so that we know what kind of money we have to spend. True. <laughs> okay. That's so sad. No, I don't want to get my things charged. 